Good evening, class. We're going to finish talking about inverse kinematics today. And again, just a reminder, we're doing inverse kinematics on systems that have six degrees of freedom, where they have a spherical wrist, and the first three degrees of freedom are for the positioning of the robot. So this is the reference for today is out of chapter 3.3. .3. And so as we talked last time, we can decouple this problem into solving first the orientation uh, and moving, marching backwards from the orientation, from the end effector, a d6 distance to this special coordinate called the wrist center, or OC. And so typically the problem is given, we're given an R, which is the rotation of the end effector, and an O, which is offset to that end effector. And then we want to determine um, what is the rotation, you know, what, what should we set these last three degrees of freedom? In order to achieve the correct orientation. So what we've done is we've set up the first three joints of the robot uh, to get the point of the robot at the wrist center in the correct position. Uh, and in order to set those, that's going to generate some a rotation into the third frame from the base frame. And we know our R. So now we have to invert this problem and solve for what is R6 in coordinate frame 3. So I want you to pause the video and work out the math for that. And remember the trick that finding the inverse of a rotation matrix is very easy. All right, pause, you work that out, and then resume. All right, yes, it is that easy to invert a matrix to take the inverse of it. Um, we want to isolate R6 of 3. So what is the orientation from the spherical wrist to uh, the correct uh, orientation at the end. I'll just multiply both sides of the equation by uh, R3 in the zeroth frame, take the inverse of that, and we'll isolate our R63. Now to get the inverse of this, well, all we have to do then is um, take the transpose of it. The transpose of R3 is zero times transpose times R gives you your rotation. And so now we just have to figure out, well, what should we set these last three joint variables in order to get R6 in frame three? And so this is a ZYZ matrix. This is something we studied earlier when we were learning about um, orientation frames. And so remember, this is a three by three matrix. That's just a, a bunch of scalar values uh, that happen to have the rows all summed to one and the columns all summed to one and the determinant is positive 1. So from lecture 6, we show that you know, multiplying these three together uh, gives you uh, this transformation. Um, but this was for 4, 5, and 6, and here we've got psi, theta, and phi, phi. So all we have to do is then figure out the correspondences between these. And so you can see, well, phi is the same as angle 4, theta is the same as angle 5, and psi is the same as angle 6. And so the answer for this is just that phi is our, our fourth parameter, theta is our fifth, and psi is our sixth. So we've already solved how to solve the kinematic decoupling for orientation. We just have to change the variables that we're talking about. All right, now our challenge is to figure out well, how do we get the rest of the robot so the wrist center is at the correct position. Uh, now, uh, again, we're doing this for, for lower degrees of freedom robots that just have just enough degrees of freedom to reach any uh, position orientation. But in general, how we do this is we take our manipulator and we want to solve the ith, um, the ith joint variable. And so then we, we project our, our manipulator into a plane. Uh, and a plane that is uh, in the x i minus 1, y i minus 1 frame. So we step back one frame, and then we figure out you know, what is our change, what is this parameter value that we've done in this frame. And so these are simpler geometric problems in that you know, we're usually trying to solve out some triangles equations. And so here's an example. This is our articulated manipulator that has a waist rotation, a shoulder rotation, and an elbow rotation. And uh, we'd like to figure out a few of these parameters that are unknown in here. 
So we're given the ZC, that's uh, the center of our wrist coordinate. Uh, we're also given XC and YC. And so we want to figure out, you know, first solve out what R is and then solve what S is. And so I'm going to let you pause and see if you can figure that out. And then we'll walk through it. So go ahead and pause the video, solve this out. All right, resuming, uh, we notice that this R, well, this is just this hypotenuse. So what we're going to do is we're going to project this down into this frame. Um, the other one, and then, so it's just going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then this s uh, value here, well, to get to zc, it's d1 up to our first joint plus s. And so that's equal to zc. So here's our solution. We've got our, our the square root of x squared plus y squared, and then zc. Uh, minus d1 gives us this unknown s value. So this is easy to see. We're going to project that down into the frame. So I'm taking my, I want to figure out what is theta 1. I'm going to project it down into the frame x0, y0. And when I look straight down, we can see that this theta 1, well, we can solve that. We could solve it with the cosine. Um, but remember, the cosine can have some ambiguities so instead we're going to use the arc tangent uh, for this and so we project this down in the frame again we said that this r is going to be xc squared plus yc squared we know our s our, our theta one is going to be the arc tangent of our xc yc this is a two argument argued arc tangent however uh, we could have um, you know have the robot completely turn backwards and then reach back over its head. And so this example, you know, I'm actually turned all the way out to here and come back. And so that's how we get the theta one, the arc tangent of x squared, xc, yc, plus pi. Give her a second solution. Remember, inverse kinematics, we want to have all possible solutions. So we can pick the one that requires the least movement. Uh, now, there is a singular configuration in this. And this singular configuration happens uh, when the robot is um, in what's commonly known as the ballerina position. So it's got his arm right above its head. Uh, and this one, you know, our, our value is zero. There's no offset. Our s is the same as what we had before. But our theta one can be any angle uh, in the set zero to two pi, because all angles will get us to this spot. There's an infinite number of solutions for this point. Um, next, we're going to look at this articulated manipulator for our two links. Well, remember, we solved this out earlier when we were um, doing, our, doing our work um, in the first chapter. Uh, but we can walk through and see how this solution is derived. We want to know, we know what S and R is. We just don't know what theta 2 and theta, R, uh, theta 3 are. And so uh, what we do know, you know, we can compute the cosine of theta 3. So the cosine of theta 3 is given by our um, the law of cosines. And so uh, we had that on our previous slide here. Uh, that we got c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of theta c squared. And so we can figure out what is this interior angle and theta 3 is just going to be pi minus uh, theta 3. So the cosine of theta 3 is given by our, um, uh, the relationship in the previous page, which has a number of constants. When I sub in the values we've gotten for r and s, it gets to a rather large constant. We're going to call that entire constant d. And then our theta 3, again, we're going to use the arc tangent. Um, but the sine value can be either positive or negative because we need both possible answers. Uh, then our theta 2 angle is going to be, uh, you know, first uh, we take our, our angle um, for what is our, our angle all the way up to this point here, so this uh, total angle up to this point, minus our, our theta 3 angle that we've calculated and we get an offset, again, when we shove all the parameters that we have before, 
how we get this uh, two-part answer here. Right. Now we can make this problem slightly harder if um, all the axes are not coincident, if we've got a little bit of an offset uh, from the shoulder joint. Right. So we talked about how you know, a number of robot designs have this, this offset from this motor. It gives us enough room to build this motor on here. And so again, what we're going to do is we're going to project this into a lower dimensional space. Um, when you solve for theta 1, uh, notice that you know theta 1 uh, is a little bit more difficult to solve. However, phi is something that we can solve directly. Uh, and then we can also solve for this alpha value. So that's how we're going to solve theta 1. Uh, think of that theta 1 is a summation of, of phi um, minus alpha. So what I want you to do then is to pause the video, see if you can write out a solution for alpha, and then write out a solution for phi. So go ahead and pause the video, solve that out. And here's our answer. So we said that theta 1 is phi minus alpha. Uh, this phi value is just the arcanj 2 of our xc and our yc of our wrist center. Um, now this alpha value is you know, slightly more complicated. Uh, so it's easier if you uh, rotate into this coordinate frame that's defined uh, by this uh, theta 1 angle here. Uh, and look at what is my total distance along this angle here. Uh, and what is my offset on this side? So this distance right here, this is D. We know that's D because we defined it on this other side. And then our R is something that we uh, have solved out before. Remember, it's xc plus yc quantity squared minus our d. You know, minus our d squared. Uh, and that's going to give us our, our, well, it gives us our, our final thing. We have the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and so now we've got both sides, and then we can plug both these values back in, and we've got theta 1. All right. Now for the right arm, um, this is the right arm configuration. Remember, we can spin a robot all the way around the back, and then now it's instead of a left arm robot, it's a right arm robot. Well, we want to figure out you know, what is this total angle theta one. So from our x-axis all the way around here. Well, yeah, that might be a little difficult to jump to all at once. So we can break that up into a few different components. Um, theta 1 is actually going to be this angle beta uh, from a, a straight line to our end, end effector uh, plus alpha. So beta plus alpha gives us that value. Then itself, you know, this beta value might not be real obvious, but it, the beta value is really this angle, which I'm going to call it gamma plus pi over here. So we're going to solve first for gamma and for alpha. Then we can sub those in to find beta. We can sub all those in, we've got theta 1. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can solve this out. It's a nice geometric problem, kind of like, oh, the SAT problems you had. Maybe a little bit harder. All right, work on that. Resuming, well, as I said, this theta 1 is a summation of alpha plus beta. Beta itself is gamma plus pi. So that means, oh, let's just solve these ones. So let's, let's take the easy one first. This alpha value here um, is you know, similar to what we've solved before. You know, we just form a triangle. And remember, it's up by y. And its distance is xc across. So we just find the arctangent of those two. That gives us alpha right there. Now gamma, again, gamma is this angle, but it's also symmetrically this angle. And so its um, opposite angle is going to be d. This distance here is given by the Pythagorean theorem. So it's r squared minus d squared. Take the square root of that. We've got our component here. Which means that our theta 1 is just uh, our alpha value plus our beta value. So adding pi uh, will in negate this term here. And we've got our solution. So again, we, we've projected this into the x0, y0 plane and we can solve this simpler geometric problem. All right, and now we have all four solutions uh, for this robot arm, this puma arm that has this offset of D. 
Um, so our kinematic solution is four solutions. We've cataloged them all and we can pick the one that is most convenient. All right, we are going to jump into velocity kinematics in the next lecture. So I'd appreciate it if you could send me your questions and let me know that. Uh, when I come back, I'm going to show you a number of pictures from here showing that all roboticists are using things like SE3 um, and uh, kinematics and forward kinematics.